Let's turn you off. What is the simple life really? Now, anybody who knows me, not that many people do really, because in this day and age, every middle-aged person you come across, the third line that you hear from them is, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time actually to care about a crime being committed in or near the community uh, by somebody uh, regarding a huge uh, sanctuary badger set, massive wildlife crime, need some help. Even in pandemic year or lockdown, or we didn't really have that around here. Anyway. Time. I do things or have done things in society. Really very time consuming things. The most interesting was actually two and a half years ago trying to assist a 50 year old woman, as so many do now, round here, this region. Uh, with uh, really bad, possibly f uh, imminently fatal, hard skunk marijuana and alcohol problems, which had already started to damage her kidney. Why was I helping her? Why was I trying to arrange for her to go and seek professional detox, etc., and counselling? because she was living on five paradise acres which I'd adopted for some children that weren't being used. The acres weren't being used, the horses weren't being used. And oh, when, I, when I saw that this woman was there some of the time as a, so, uh, as a guest, but it's more, always more complicated, the landowner needed her dramas in her life. Yep, it's like the solution. Oh, try and get some... Try and get this woman to professional help. And I spent months trying, trying, putting a huge amount of effort into getting allies because one person cannot do one-on-one -on -one with somebody, anybody actually in Britain anymore. So recruiting one or two good burgers, like-minded middle-aged people to just when so many people did have time to just do a straightforward standard assist this person into some professional services. There aren't any around, so that would have required uh, organising transport and a minder, a chaperone to make sure she got to Narcotics Anonymous meetings and things like that. Uh, that was selfish because I wanted her gone from the property because there was no question about it it would have ended up in her becoming slightly dangerous not in any violent way oh no 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 there are other ways and you don't just don't want any of that anyway what is a simple life i'm not a hippie <laughs> i did more in the community 20 20 and 21 than anybody i know for miles and not officially not via church halls, not in groups. They don't work. They just don't work. It's all these small little bits. In fact, all of that is no different than your messaging. It's just little bits of instant gratification. Dopamine hits. I have so many. Recordings, whatever you want to call them. Um, just notes on all of that that then fails. <clears throat> the simple life. So this winter, and this morning, the window is dewy. I leave it dewy because if someone comes along the dog walking path, that's my curtain. But what the simple life is really is for since the beginning of December, for at least five or six weeks, it's been so cold. Uh, it's, very, it's kind of frost pocket here. 
that I've not been able to really function until I get out when it's very frosty, midwinter, uh, by 11 a.m., quarter of a mile up there, there's a sunspot facing the sun. But you see, stopping, not stopping really, just stopping being yourself, forced into stopping being yourself by <coughs> nature, the ordinary weather factors, etc. That is so good for you. It actually, even when, as this winter, it was a little bit frantic. I have a little note down there that actually says, if I die, in other words, if I get hypothermia, um, it's impossible to heat a van in the middle of the winter. Your colour gas freezes, unless you've got a van large enough for a small wood burner. Um, it's basically impossible. Oh, you could have fancy ways. No, you give up. Just accept. Fate accompli. A couple of rugs. And hibernate slightly. But then it ends up as so good for you. It's a punctuation mark on who you are. Because the non-simple life is about who you are. Who you think you are. And to be forced to stop. Although this winter I haven't stopped. I've been engaged in the most important Odyssey there is, but because everything else was stopped, I had space to do that. That's the point. Now, unfortunately, everybody else I meet ever doesn't understand that mode, and then in that mode. You're focusing on what really matters for the rest of life. And two weeks ago, a report came out for the first time ever. Oh, people living singly pay a huge financial penalty. Not interested. Every time you turn on Radio 4 for the last couple of years, huge waiting lists at hospitals, huge bed blocking, all of this. Nobody will say this is because, I mean, there's somebody parked here. Almost everybody that comes here, it's only occasionally do people come here. The single people. I know for a fact that in the rural areas now, now we can talk of ageing population. <coughs> All of these are tangents, diversions. People coming back or settling away from the sickness in the cities, the violence, the, the okay, it's all low level, we know that, or largely low level, but it's horrible, even here. Loads of people will just chuckle at it, even here. It's horrible. And in the cities, I'm sure it's even worse. But taking a 30-mile stretch down here, largely of more thoughtful than average people, a third, at least, of households are single people. And if they get ill and go to hospital, the hospital requires you to have somebody to chaperone you out. Most of them, a lot of them, haven't got anybody who've got the time. That's what's actually happened. That's the problem with your NHS, that we no longer have small tribes or couples. It's just, <laughs> I laugh that this is never mentioned. If you want to, on, I'm going to put it up here, on the religious program, it's actually quite good. It gives a good overview of politics. But we had yet another spin woman this morning, so piously and earnestly talking about her initiatives in her church that's connected to Parliament. You want to cut emissions by 20% overnight. You, of course, nobody... I, I'm, I'm from the proper free 
living. Age 16, for a couple of years, I knew the best of what were almost the leftover of progressive hippiness. I knew the best of them. Nobody wants to be forced into anything. But somehow in incentivizing or just emotionally blackmailing, which is all that nudging or spreading wisdom is, usually, uh, the great majority of people who live alone to somehow find a way, and perhaps there need to be tax incentives, somehow finding a way to have two or three per people per chimney. Two or three people per live-in van, etc. Overnight, if you do an equation on all the ways that a couple share resources, share lifts, one takes the other to work on the way to her work, etc., etc. The carbon footprint of people living in couples, on average, particularly once they get into the second half of life, is far lower. That's the way you could immediately, overnight, if you brought in a law like that, I'm not in any way suggesting, I don't really agree in laws like that, I agree with environmental laws, but if you brought a law in that people must live in groups of two or three people properly in the same household, well, it would also solve your... Uh, the great majority of the housing issue is exactly for this reason too. I can say there are hundreds, thousands of households, houses, in this down this whole region where one 50, 60, 70, 80 year old person is living in a four, five bedroom house. Or even if it's a three bedroom house. This is just, that's the reason that rents are so high. I wouldn't have my life any other way than this second. The key to life and mindfulness is I would not have my life any other way than it is this second. So I never, ever, there's a silver lining in everything, even if it's just making you think philosophically in a good way. Yep, so the simple life. Believe me. It's um, it's good for figuring what really you need to do with the rest of your life. It's as simple as that. But also, the 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 uh, the thing that I'm going to really write about is what can be easily termed but you have to read the book and then think about it as the black swan. The black swan is you don't know what's the other side of an experience or change. Nicholas Hassim Taleb's book is one of the greatest books for decades. It's not about economics. He uses it as a metaphor, the economics that the book covers. And I have a perfect example of a black swan here. Six months ago, no, seven months ago, the fuel pump and an electronic thing possibly broke down on this. Now, I would have been, I was, slightly horrified for a day or two. Shit. Thousand pound bill, 500 if I'm lucky. I'm stuck here. Now, for years, because of an atomized society that's also so cliquey and bourgeois which I don't believe belonging because I read books you can't even have conversations with people about books I give up reading books by the way except for certain like allowed books anyway there's not enough community real community in this whole region and I've suffered from that off and on I've lived in a, a little hamlet of almost entirely middle-aged people, but because it was rentals, there were four or five there of nine properties who were so ill, and two or three became dangerous. It was a gorgeous little community, Hamlet. 
like a mile from anywhere up in the hills. Just it's, a, it's an, an anachronism. It's a, it was the outbuildings of a once great, once huge old country estate, and the country estate had been demolished. They couldn't pay their taxes a hundred years ago. Anyway, because they took rentals, so several people who'd been moved there, and I think they almost did it deliberately, had such problems, even here, in, in the lockdown, or after, kind of 2021, they became dangerous. One fella, heroin, just truly more dangerous even, one fella, middle-aged, just went berserk alcoholically. Big man, dangerous. So, I needed to move anyway. But um, why have I broached this subject? Why have I gone into this subject? Uh, yeah, 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 Black Swan. And I was working for three or four months up in the hills in a very paradise but isolated area. So, not enough people in my life. Now, getting stuck here, and I then started an environmental project nearby. Forget it. Put my complete soul into it. September, October last year. No, bullshit. Just people pleasing. It's actually people pleasing. It's, it's an illness. Over the last six months, well, actually quite soon, I got befriended two or three uh, middle-aged, married middle-aged women who walk their dogs here. And a couple of guys as well. We talk occasionally. And it's great. I needed just ordinary chat with people. I think the key is that people who are a bit more outdoorsy than the average person. So it did me, it's done me so much good. Just becoming an easy conversant, just passing. And some of them do come down even to talk with me. Um, one has to keep batted away the one or two very uh, mentally ill or quite mentally ill um, men. Um, I even have a couple of female stalkers, the big chubby ones. Um, it's funny. But learning how to deal with the community. It's a black swan. I had no idea. I was sitting here six or seven months ago thinking, shit, this is the worst thing ever. Because I hadn't broken down for about <laughs> 20 years of that. Shit, I've broken down. And I've broken down in a place where people are back and forth. Yeah. Actually turned out to be the best thing for years in my life. That's what a black swan is. And only when you're in the simple life mode. In other words, so you can have a, well, it's not a crisis. Um, because it turned out that it was the best thing ever. Only when you're in simple mode and have so little clutter, so little dragging your thoughts elsewhere, are you able to actually appreciate and enjoy in time the Black Swan event. That's, that's all, I'm afraid to say, the whole of life coaching, mindfulness coaching, and almost all of the therapeutic um, process, all of which I understand perfectly, and I've known quite a few people who are involved in those things, it's all wrong. Black swanning is what it's about. But you can't create a black swan. That's the whole point. There has to be the initial kind of shock phase. It has to be real. It has to be of the body that the negative event hits you in your body so uh, genuinely and you'll have days of minor angst or major angst even and you realize ah, this was just what i needed there we go 